The man, the myth, the legend, the most popular player in the world, Klaus is in, and he's got golems! We are down to the round of 64 in the Cosmo League. Today's matchup, the defending world champions, Navi, and on the other side, we have Flex Esports. Let's see who can survive into the round of 32. As we move in here for the first attack here, Gaku starts off here with a queen charge into twin hog attack. Looks like he's trying to push the queen towards the town hall. The king can go north into the scattershot compartment and go after the defensive queen there. Not seeing much resistance there. And the queen was able to cut off his path and force him in. Once the king would, he was already funneled on the right side, so he just kind of walked towards the queen. And then the queen made sure that he ducked into that compartment. Very, very good control of the path right there but on top of that the king was able to take everything of value in that compartment but also pulls the cc and that way he doesn't need to like waste a siege machine on a yeti bomb to go get the cc pulled early and make sure that he deals it before it goes into the heavy damage defenses but there are a lot of heavy damage defenses on right now he needs to go invisible his town hall two expos and the warden statue but luckily the rage tower has not triggered yet the queen goes invisible for just a moment there while she has the CC attacking her while she was powering through those defenses. And then the super minions started to go over to the right there to the flame flicker. But luckily they, they turn back when the queen wakes back up. And then we have the flame flicker staying safe on the right side of the base here. So off to a very strong start here. Electrolyte is activated now, so we need to get the Electrolyte under control. We need to get the next phase attack here moving soon. And it looks like we're seeing that start over to the far left side of the base here. The super hogs immediately followed by wizards will start in with the world champion of the warden. And then we have regular hogs to collapse in the flank. So as soon as the defense of our champion is distracted, we need hogs at the archer tower here. There we go. Perfectly on cue. And we don't have a rage for the hogs, so it's going to be a challenging area to move through without a rage. We like to pair the ward ability with the rage to make sure that we can advance through this area under the ward ability under his protection as quickly as possible. But he has some freezes, and he'll just use the freezes, locking out the biggest defenses as he goes past this... Rage Tower, which is double the damage of all the defenses here. We've got a Skeleton Spell locking out the Monoth right now. The World Champion with the Diggy gets the stun onto the one multi. He throws the other multi again, but the Rage Tower is faded now, so he might be able to survive through it. Diggy get another stun. There it is. There it is. There's that stun. Stun up the Monolith. Step into the multi Inferno. The Hogs have wrapped around that multi and got to the final defenses before she gets over there. It's a triple for Gaku. What a Queen Charge. Brilliant attack there with the Twin Hogs. Flex returning fire now with a super bowler smash. We got a flame flinger starting on the right side of the base here. Remember, the flame flinger can outrange all of the defenses except for mortars, expos, and the monolith. So if you can just move in this area and yes, set up a funnel. But it it kind of seems like he's getting ready to set a funnel to go through the town hall. Like he's got a baby dragon at the very bottom of the base here, and the flame flinger working on the right. And he hasn't started like a warden walk. What is he done in here? He Okay, okay, he's gonna push a queen charge through the town. Oh wait, I know what this is. I know what this is. I love this approach actually. It actually worked out very, very well, but that means he does need to move this queen rather quickly because he did delay the queen deploying for quite a while there. And so if the queen is just gonna go in here and secure the town hall. Then he's going to be about at the minute and 20 minute or 20 second mark there by the time the queen is ready for the super bowlers to deploy and that means we're going to have to see an extremely extremely fast super bowler section of this attack because he's delayed so long that he's just expired a lot of the clock there by it's so long to start that queen charge but he has the jump he's going to have the town hall poison fade and now we can put the bowlers down behind the queen and the poison will be faded, and he won't pull the healers through the poison, and that allows him to go with the safer approach onto the base here and charge the town hall side of it, which normally we would say is a big no-no there because we don't want to drag the healers through the poison and end up getting them killed. But the king goes to Phoenix, and the Phoenix is able to lure out all the air traps in the core of the base there. You can see it's opened up red air bombs, and that's keeping the queen's healers even more safe, but I'm taking away quickly. We've got to get the defensive heroes under control. Specifically, the Royal Champion on the bottom side of the base there. Royal Champion is coming in from the very bottom corner, and a couple of the bowlers are leaving, and they're taking a healer and the warden with them. So the Queen's under on the core of the base, and the Royal Champion has to do most of the heavy lifting, but at least he's getting the troops out there to get some cleanup done. So maybe, maybe, maybe the Queen can carry 
and you know, on the side of the base down as well. But we taking the model of fire now. Guys, <laughs> I mean, I think maybe he could have beat the clock here and pulled through if he would have had the bullet stay to the inside of the base there with the warden. But with the queen all on her own in there, I don't know if he can pull this off here. He does end up moving over and get the defensive queen on the right side of the base there. And he does have that jump giving him access to get out of there and get away from the model. So 20 seconds left to go. Yeah, I mean, he sat there and waited for so long as he let that flame flinker establish on that right side. He should have just started the queen charge a lot sooner than he did. It was too much of a delay. He still has a lot of force here moving. It might be enough to get past most of the defense other than the monolith. But it descends, it's a 79% of big miss here for Team Flats. U to 14, the player who clutched the World Championship when Navi won it last year in Finland. Let's see what he can do here with a bit of lightning to take out both of the sweepers, two on each. And he's gonna be charging Super Dragons by the looks of it, right through the monolith. In to of the Town Hall, always worries me a little bit there, but he just Crims out a couple of the buildings on the outside of the base there, and then sends rocket balloons to go after the air defense. Two more rocket balloons on the left side of the base there. And there, crash damage should take it. Remember, rocket balloons do more crash damage than regular balloons, so find that with their ace when they drop there, and they can surge in and set up the funnel while taking out the air defenses, which does make so the super dragons all stay central on the base there. They all go directly to the and into the defensive heroes as well. Look where the heroes are on the base here. We have the key. Or the, the Queen and the World Champion just off of the Eagle Artillery compartment, and so we can get to them relatively quickly. He's got a couple dragons going over there right now. Look onto her. Move up two of them, and the Warden give me the assist there. But he does have the Super Minion Bomb travel through the Warden ability and arrives at the Town Hall. So they destroyed the CC building, which means if there are any troops inside of there, then there's no longer going to be able to deploy. And since he was able to secure the Town Hall, he doesn't have to worry about that with the heroes. And that means that everything is going exactly to plan here for U to 14 of that Super Minion Bomb. Because if you're not putting any heroes into that part of the pack there, and you're only putting air troops in, and you never pull the CC because you're able to leave Lava Hounds and Ice Golems in there. You might pull some of the lighter things to go in, but anything that can target air goes down very, very quickly and has low HP, and so the dragons can tend to deal with it very easily. But he does need to get this Expo under control. He's got a Skeleton Spell, locking out the Defensive King and the Defensive Grand Warden here. Somehow his ward is still alive, and he has an Electric Owl right out in front of him that can soak any Black Air Bombs up, and he'll just... Off that king ability, and this the queen can reach the expo with Waldo, so step over there and deal with that now. And the world champion still on standby. I mean, he's got so much force here. There's nothing to slow this down right now. He puts to the world champion. The world champion will now deploy with the dinghy, and that means we got stuns and more damage mitigation on top of multiple freezes for the back end of the base there. But he's got ground skill. He slowed him down for just a moment there. But it's not going to slow him down nearly enough here. 40 seconds. That was very time efficient. That was like the exact opposite of time efficiency that we just saw in that last attack there. So Yuna showing why he was on that world championship roster and why he is and will continue to always be one of my favorite players to ever play on this team. And unfortunately, he did retire. But I feel like he's I feel like he's out of retirement now because we've seen him. We've been seeing him play a lot recently. Just not in the World Championship circuits. We have a, another Super Dragon attack here. Look at the speed for prison face here. Like, it feels somewhat symmetrical from the Eagle Artillery up until the scatter shots. But then when you get to the Town Hall compartment and beyond, the base just turns into a weird maze. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. But sometimes these weird layouts can throw people off. And we'll see if he can get his queen to go in here and set up this attack here. He's not going to charge the queen very far here. He's got the recall spell. And the recall spell can extract the queen, the unicorn, and up to four healers here. And then redeploy them somewhere else in the base here. So he just dives the queen in and picks up whatever he can grab without putting his queen into a lot of danger. Then... He can get the funnel form here and set up the dragons very nicely. I feel like you want to pull out here before you engage the king. Got the rage tower pre-triggered. That's a big deal right there. Then he extracts her out and then redeploys her down to the bottom of the base. Now, 
as he pushes into the air defense here. He can set up the Super Dragons to go right through the Town Hall, and the Queen's able to form the funnel on both sides, and he preserves his King could be used later on, and the King can be very critical at the very back end of the pack here because the Super Dragons are not intended to take out the entire base. Uh, the Phoenix on the board here, they can assist them, but if they can get in here and push all the way to the Monolith and the CC, then that would be the value he's looking for here. If they can also get the Defensive Queen on top of the base there, then that would also set them up very nicely. But the Stone Slammer is the Siege Machine of choice for this one here, and it soaks up all the red air bombs ahead of the Dragons. And he does get the Monolith down, he does step into the CC building, and no CC's groups of significance have come out because the Queen, once again, never went inside the CC range. And so he was able to leave whatever's in there inside, and he was able to take the dragons through it, and that means they do die with it. The dragons go all the way to the queen here. They do get it down. They get the multi down. This is looking very good here. They have definitely got this under control. Kazuma might be losing his base here. Being deported with the king on the right side of the base there. The warden is still chipping away here with the phoenix. They're potentially get a scatter shot down, aren't they? <laughs> These dragons took out the base and left nothing left here for the heroes they're gonna be able to walk through this with all the healers keep the queen charge alive the king working on the outside to make sure she hugs the walls tight and is able to reach through and grab these extra defenses and the world champion now slipping in to get the stuns now this was much better than their previous one although i still i still think that if he was able to run the last one a bit more time efficiently i think he potentially could have got that if the bullets did decide to walk on but he kept that queen alive remember so I don't know. As it stands, looks like he's going to swag a queen ability here. And we got a triple on the board for Team Flex. For defending world champions, sending in stars for their next attack. It is going to be a... Skelly Donut? Looks like stars going after the Skelly Donut into Lalo. Going to be using the Skelly spells, which... If you don't know, skeleton spells and bat spells cannot draw the defensive CC troops out. So if he can use the skeleton spells to destroy the CC building, just like in the dragon attacks, if you destroy the CC building before the CC deploys, then you can make sure you never have it come out and intercept you. But he does position this invisibility to not cover any of those three buildings, and the skeleton spells claim out the CC, the multi-inferno, and the expo. And now, with that out of the way here, looks like a Flame Flieger starting from the far left side of the base there. And got a couple Tesla's drawn on the ground here. There's no defenses in this entire left side area, all the way up to the multi that can outrange the Flame Flieger. But there might be a lot of traps in the area. So we keep an eye on the Flame Flieger as it works its way forward and continues to raid Fire Spirits. And so basically the Queen can make her way over to the Eagle Artillery. We do have this bottom compartment that he can deal with the Lalo, not too heard about that, but if the flame is able to collapse in the far left side of the base here, get the multi down, and the heroes are able to get the eagle artillery, what will be left is a lane that goes right through the middle base there, and is going to converge on that town hall and the monolith, so I'll do that without facing any sweepers if he goes in that area, but I have a feeling he's actually going to point from the very top of the base, and try to put the Lalo over the head of the heroes so we get the cross tanking, and try to make so we can split the damage between the heroes and the Lalo and get both of them to survive and get more value than they otherwise would. King, King, get that Eagle Artillery down before it was able to activate. He's being careful to not deploy too many troops here before that Eagle activates once you drop 200 uh, space there onto the base. He'll step his way in, or is it 220 nowadays? And they just changed it a little while back and made so like for called it across all of them, but I don't really know. <laughs> now that I think about it. Uh, but the Queen does make it all the way to the scatter shot there. Look at this. The Phoenix is providing tanking off of the off of when he used it on the King, but the Queen was able to survive through the scatter shot. Look at the Sweeper as well. Not quite. The model attacks her out and he does indeed throw the Lalo into the top of the base. Gotta be careful around the Town Hall here because the Town Hall is being boosted by the Rage Tower. Double damage and the Town Hall's already moving it up. So he does get the more champion to go to the core of the base there, but she gets stalled by ground scaling. Thank you for a strike. Nope, no, she's distracted. She's going to go down. Monolith's going to hold the line there. And that could be the difference. That could be... Wait, the rogue champion ends up surviving through it. And the Lalo keeps pushing. He's overwhelming the backside of the base here. He's got the 
Dragon Rider and more balloons gonna go in here and with the high HP of the Dragon Rider, the splash damage of the scatter shot will not slow him down to the slightest. And holy blues, he's got enough army left over with extra spells. He could probably go triple another base. Ours has the triple three on the board here for Navi. Looks to be a clone Hydra attack getting ready to go in opposite of the town hall near the Eagle Artillery on the left side. He will just go ahead and form the simplest of funnels, just removing the most exterior buildings on the base with a couple of sneaky goblins and then sending in the dragons, the balloons, and the dragon riders all together here with a warden protecting on his entry, but also making sure to clip the blimp. And now the blimp has cleared up all the traps as it travels through the middle of the base there. Tons and tons of traps going off there, but there's more, there's more, there's more. There's a tornado trap. Watch the super minion as he clones him up there, and the super minion bomb needs to secure the child takedown. And it needs to get the multi as well if it can. They did have the tornado trap pull the super minions into the town hall poison and blast, and so that did a lot of damage here. And he did get one to survive and get that multi down. Dragons without much of a funnel here, just able to wipe through the right side of the base, or left side of the base. Um, but he was able to wipe out that section and the dragons are still a little bit alive over the side of the base here. They're gonna go back to the middle. Now watch these dragons here because if one of these dragons survives and goes into the CC and destroys it before the heroes move to the range here, then that dragon is worth its weight in gold right now. It's, in, it's gonna survive, isn't it? Damage on it. Okay, okay, I'll get targeted by the multi. That's not the biggest deal there, but if it takes the CC down, then he won't have to fight the CC a little bit later on. But let's target the CC here because the king's getting dangerous and close. The dragon doesn't have it down yet. And the king pulls the ice golems out. His barbarian split off there, and the dragon wasn't able to claim it in time. And that means we're going to be frozen up here by these defensive ice golems as we make our way into the very threatening area. The last threatening area of the base here with the race tower, the... Defensive Queen, the scatter shot, and two ground expos. Spells here to support. Reese is wearing off now, but that is not when you want to be frozen up there. Not while you're engaging all these heavy defenses, but he gets the first expo down. His Ice Golem freezes up, so Ice Golem freezes on both sides here. Big Dragon outside of the base here. Big Dragon to pick up that Archer Tower. We're going to clean up there. The Queen still has her ability. There's still a chance that he ends up making it through. He also has. And invisibility as well, but the king's providing tanking. The king, does he have the phoenix? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He'll pick himself back up and provide eight more seconds of tanking. I feel like he should not have popped that invisibility just yet. Queen ability, though. He's going to be okay here, Expo. They're locking on. Now south here, kind of struggling with the cleanup. I think he's in a time fell, this, isn't he? Rip the dream. Rip the dream. Man. That's, that sucks, that sucks. That is two time fails from Flex. And that's not what you want to have happen here when Navi is unleashing with all triples. Do we think that Navi could push from here to a perfect war? Or do we think they could give a chance for Team Flex to make the comeback? Either way, let's see what Kazuma can do here. I mean, either way, it'd be exciting. I always like to see those uh, very extremely rare, rare perfect wars at Town Hall 15. But it looks like Kazuma dropping in a Super Archer Bomb. There, there, there was a Super Archer Bomb, but there's the big mistake, Navi! Ends up with every single one of the Super Archers dying to the giant bombs. And anything else that struck them while they were trying to get cloned. Like, he wasted all the spells. He wasted the clones. He wasted the rage. He used up some of his invisibility. He has four invisibility. We were trying to rage up and clone the super archers. And then make them invisible while they nuked out that entire section of the base. And this base particularly is going to be challenging to get all the way in and secure the town hall and have much left afterwards because these super barbarians can definitely do some work here to form funnels but i'm very concerned if he doesn't reach the queen to the town hall here and take it down directly with her ability but the king will work on the right side and the king being separated from the queen is worried me even more but he'll put in a bunch of super barbarians to wrap around the king and the warden will be used to with the king ability to make sure that he gets that 
area of the base they're cleared. There's a definite one-star risk right now. Very, very nervous. He's making her way forward there, but she has all the invisibility. He's trying to do like a queen charge with no healers, and he doesn't really have a choice there because he has only these invisibility spells to carry the queen forward, and they do make it all the way in. So Christ is a part of there, and that's a very good thing there. You need to quickly identify if something kills the super archers, you have to have a backup plan in, in place there. You gotta make sure that you keep this queen charge alive and just turn all those extra invisibilities into a repurposed queen charge without healers, and he was able to secure the final takedown. And look at the percentage here. He's actually climbed up to a decent amount. However, the percentage is just going to match the percentage of the lowest miss there from Team Flex. It matches it down to the building. So he's gonna lose this last archer. Nope. A headhunter to distract the round of eagle artillery strikes. They're giving the archers a little more time to work here, but he's gonna lock onto it. I don't know if he can take it down to time. I don't think so. So there we go. A big miss here for Kazuma. The first slip up of Navi, and it comes at a time that it gives Team Flex a chance to make the comeback. They need to get a triple and they need to get it now. Ray live for Team Flex. Diving in with a limp to dive after the Defensive World Champion. We do have the Getty Bomb out of that. Gonna go ahead and take out the Defensive World Champion. And now, we wanna go from here. We wanna go Queen to Town Hall. Looks like he's gonna push the Queen to Town Hall. But the Yeti Bomb was able to get the CC pull. And it was able to clear a major target. It was able to get the funnel form for the Queen. And now we don't have any additional damage on the Queen's flank. We'll pop this Lava Hound. And he can fight the CC out in the edge of the base there in safety. Possible you want to draw the CC early. And a blimp is a very powerful tool that has a lot of multifunction right there to most importantly get the CC dealt with so he doesn't fight it while he's under heavy fire. And since most of the defensive CCs are going to be the tanky CCs that are built to slow you down and anchor you. Ooh, that was three black air bombs. I think only one went to his healers though. They may be okay with that, but he's deployed a lot of troops here and the Eagle Artillery has now activated. So he deploys the King over the right side of the base there and the King with more HP will be the target of the Eagle Artillery to keep the damage off of the Queen. And Paul's not activated yet. He's cut off the path up ahead of the Queen here, so she's just gonna round into the bottom of the base here and go into the Town Hall. Well, we're passing the minute 30 mark, so can't delay too much longer here. We put the Hogs in, they're gonna go charge the Eagle Artillery and get it down here while the King continues to keep those strikes under control, but the Queen's healers are getting targeted by the Town Hall. And I think she to get to look at that. She'll pop her ability. She will take out the trash buddies outside. She steps away and he may need to freeze on the Town Hall. He goes invisible, that'll do the trick. Freezes are being used on the opposite side of the base there, but he misses one of the freezes. It does not cover the multi-inferno, and that might be a war-ending mistake right there. He ends up having raised up multi-inferno damage, doubling all of that damage output, and roasting some hogs. I smell bacon, guys. Maybe he can still pull through. He pops her ability, goes on the right side. We have a lot of troops go there working with the board. We've got a couple of troops on the left side there working on that multi, but the bottom is the biggest threat on the base right now. And if he can have enough distraction troops and the Road Champion... Ah, oh, the Road Champion need to survive there. I was going to say, if the Road Champion can survive and have enough distraction troops in the area there from the Monolith, then he might have been able to make it through. But the multi reach over the walls there quickly burned up all of his light troops. And the Road Champion went down and the Queen lost her resistance and wasn't able to provide any support. So, it's very close here. There were a couple of small mistakes. I definitely think... If he was able to keep the Queen's healers a little bit safe there, maybe use one of the freezes down there or the invisibility to cover the healers to keep them alive, then maybe could have pulled through, but he also needed to make sure he landed the freezes to cover the ranged up multi, so a 92%, and that means they're going into the final exchange two stars behind. Navi's got him on the ropes. The man, the myth, the legend, the most popular player in the world, Klaus is in, and he's got golems! He's bringing out Skelly Donut into Golem Avalanche. He's the only player in the world that has been able to pull off a successful Golem Avalanche at Town Hall 15 in an eSports tournament. So let's see if he can close out this war strong and seal the deal. It is going to be a 
Skelly Bat Dota to destroy the Inferno, the Ground Expo, and the CC. That is successful, so good start, good start. We have four golems that we can use to protect the heroes and a whole bunch of wizards that we can follow it up with. Like this attack was popular at Town Hall 9 and it is kind of a novelty outside of that. <laughs> like you don't just you don't see this attack very much here, but if you can give the heroes the protection and keep the heroes alive all the way through the base here, we can definitely make this work. But he uses the Yeti Bomb to go take the Town Hall down and he had the ward ability protecting it on its way in, and looks like he'll claim out a couple extra bonus targets as well. Are so good. Moving the golems off the left side of the base here. Because of the funnel formed by the Skelly Donut, he doesn't have any internal buildings here, so we'll just round out into the trash on the left side of the base here. Using giants and whizzes, claps in the, from the far left corner, and everybody just staying behind the golems, and slowly, that's why we call it Golem Avalanche, because we're slowly avalanching more and more big rock golems across the base there and staying just a step ahead of the heroes as we make our way forward. But a couple wall breakers gonna transition the queen into the core of the base there. He had to use two, the first one was useless. The first one was just setting up the second one and he's able to cut off the queen's pathing and force her into the channel. She pops her ability and she's taking out the internal abilities that nobody else can reach. Our champion placing on top of the base here looking very, very good, Klaus. This is wild, I can't believe he's made it this far as the base here already, but he still has this very dangerous right side area. He puts in more giants, more wizards from the right side to take out the perimeter defenses. And a couple of super barbarians as well. A big block of cannons back side of the base here. A lot of troops moving. The queen gets targeted. He does see that the queen is getting targeted by the monolith, and he will go ahead and freeze right there. Headhunters down for taking out the defensive king. Powers through that. Queen locks on the monolith. He's got it under control. More points back side. RC ability is swagged and swagged and some freezes as well. It's not just a triple. It's overkill. Klaus, what an attack. And Navi has the win. They're moving on to the round of 32. Holy cow. That was insane. That's just that's just Klaus, though. That's just that's why he's why he's so popular. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, right? Oh my goodness. Alright. Klaus, that was nuts. That was absolutely nuts. Usually we don't see a lot of jump spells in a Queen Charge Lalo unless we're trying to go all the way to the town hall. But you know what? I feel like that's exactly what he's gonna do here. If he uses the blimp to go take out the multi-inferno and maybe the eagle artillery and get the CC full, he can use that as a funneling point, and he could try to drive the queen all the way through the status shark department and then jump into the town hall department. That's an option. Doesn't necessarily mean that's what he's gonna do, but he could. Now not using the blimp, but you put it in the rock fluid, and here comes that blimp. Okay. Let's see what he's going for. Raise that blimp. Lands into the core compartment. Range it up. Any bomb pops out, and we'll get the Eagle Artillery down. If we get that multi, that'd be huge. It's maybe the World Champion go pick it up a little bit later, but no, nah, I don't know. The World Champion won't be within that area. But wait a second. The Yeti Bomb wipes out the entire core compartment and even reaches in the Town Hall compartment and got the Ray Tower triggered and also got the Battle Builder that reached over the wall. So it would have been better to get the multi Inferno. We would have got the battle builder regardless, but she has a jump and it's going as predicted. Aside from the multi inferno, King will move into the very bottom of the base here and control the pathing for the queen to push her through the jump spell. Very solid right now. Easy attack to identify, it's more difficult to perform. Queen. Pushing all the way in there. Multi inferno doing some damage to the outside of the base there, but won't be a problem. The queen should have picked up afterwards. The healers, though. The healers could end up taking some damage here. The Rage Tower is about to reset here. It's going to pop again. Okay, he gets the talent down first, though. It pops now. King under Phoenix, working on the monolith. He does have the World Champion start at the top of the base here. She takes out that multi Inferno, and he'll charge the Lalo directly through the defensive queen. Headhunters covered by the ward ability. Lock on the defensive queen. And with that protection, should be able to get her down. Her champion gets stun of the scatter shot. Over here, queen with ability at the town hall under the Rage Tower. Another model of the fire, he goes invisible, rages her again. He's very well managing the multitasking in front of the Queen Charge and Lalo at the same time. The Queen locks on the multi inferno and takes it. Camping goes to ability here as he freezes the monolith, working his way through the Tesla farm. Guys, he gotta hand it to him. 
they did very, very well this war. It is going to be a triple again by the looks of it. He's got 24 seconds. He's just got to coast his way through. He's getting the last of the defenses down. He can throw right back around. It's going to be, he's got plenty of time. Oh, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Uh, he needs to get this uh, Tesla down. Okay, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it under control. It's a triple. A very, very solid attack here for Team Flex. Unfortunately, they had a couple of those uh, time fails throughout the war here, and that pulls them back. They performed pretty solidly against Navi. It's still a 14 to 12 performance, and Navi obviously is, a t is a, just a very difficult team to beat. That performance would have beat most teams. So, solid attempt there, but uh, they are going to be eliminated from the Cosmo Cup.